worship and religion. Some people approach uh, worship and emotion. Some people approach uh, worship and do believe. They're approaching a religion. Religion meaning this is the way we worship here. And if you don't worship the way we do here, then you're not worshiping. Right. And you feel and look like an outcast. Some people have stopped going to church because they feel and look like an outcast because you don't worship the way that I worship. If you don't say, hey, look, then you don't, you're not worshiping. If you don't sit in your quiet staff, I don't want to hear all that screaming. If you're not worshiping the way I worship, that's called religion. And God did not come to bring us a religion. He came to bring us a relationship. Some people approach worship in emotion. They're happy. It's good today. And hallelujah. I'm so happy and it's good today. And they approach it because it's good. But as soon as they're down, you don't see them in church. Or if they're there, they, they got half looking like they're sucking on some lemons. And because it's emotional. And if I feel good enough to go with you, you want to church? If I feel like it, that's emotion. Some people approach worship and duplicate it. Monkey see, monkey do. I learned how to speak tongues because I heard you do it. I learned how to, to worship and raise my hands because I saw you do it. But I don't have a worship on my own. I don't have a praise of my own. What do I worship? Because God is a provider. That's why you sung that song today, Doug. What do I worship? Because God is a protector. Amen. What do I worship? Because God is a savior. My God. My worship can knock down problems. My worship can eradicate pain. My worship can break out into prayers. My worship can open the door for God to speak. My worship can show God at work in the earth. My worship can get someone saved. How can I do this? Just my worship. Just my worship. Worship. What is worship? Worship calms me down. Worship corrects my focus. Worship confuses the enemy. Why? Because why are you worshiping when I just came and you just got the news you got cancer? Why are you worshiping when you just got a divorce? Why are you worshiping when you just heard that your children did something horrific? Why are you worshiping when you're going through what you're going through? I put this main thing on you and you still worshiping? It confuses the enemy because it put it on you and God did not. But the enemy did to, to come in to make you to stop what? Worshiping. Why does he want you to stop worshiping? Because Carries me through. Do y'all see that? Yes. They keeping up with me? Yes. Amen. Why do I worship? Because God loved me before I love myself. Yes. Why do I worship? Because nobody contains um, my anger, centers my emotions, challenges my motives, clarifies my thinking, comforts my soul yes. like Jesus. Amen. Yes. Why do I worship? Because when I think about the many times I reject from our life. He didn't reject me. Why do I worship? Because when I release myself, he cleansed me of unfaithfulness, unforgiveness, fear, lying, cheating, and straight up nastiness. Amen. <laughs> Jesus came in and said, I'm going to stand up for you. Jesus came in and said, and then came in the people and said, anybody that has the greatest sin among, among the greatest Because the longer you live, you got more sin. Right. Come on, us older folks, amen. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, I got my PhD in sin. Some of y'all there yet? Yeah. It took me until I was 40 years old to get my PhD in sin. Anybody got a PhD? Yes. I said, anybody got it? It's okay. It's okay. I got a PhD in sin. But when I was 20, I just was trying to get my degree, amen. Right. I was trying to get my AA in sin. I was sitting, I was sitting in the grave. When you get older, you get a PhD. Why? Because I'm trying to stop, but I can't. Right. <laughs> That's how you get your PhD when you discover I'm going to be right, but I ain't right. <laughs> I'm going to go to church and try to be right, but something wrong. I ain't right. right. See, that's how you work to get your PhD. A person that's trying to get their AA degree in sin, amen. They just have to do it, sir. Just have to do it, amen. The Lord will give you the You just got your AA, amen, amen. You keep living, you get your Anybody got some PhD in here?
So if people want to throw a rock at me, Jesus stood in the middle and made sure people didn't throw rocks at me. Why do I worship? Because, because the man of the well, because when everyone else failed me, left me, gave up on me, he stayed with me. When I didn't know what I was going to do, when I thought I was going to lose my mind, when I was driving in the car and just let out a big scream, when I, when I was crying and didn't want nobody to see me cry, when I had to take a lunch break to go to the bathroom to get to the stall. I 
try to get back and do the things that I love to do. I had to try to find, I had to find me again. But me is not me anymore, because me is one. I hear too much of this, I got to get to myself. There's no self, it's you, you won. But I did lose me and I lost my worship. And I'm still, when I found my worship and I lifted up my hand and said, Lord, I need you. God, help me to bring back the identity of who I am. And that's why I'm so comfortable as a pastor. Wherever I go and how I speak, and I'm not worried about what people think or I'm in, you know, I, I, I do protocol and all that, but very comfortable who I am is I know my identity. Yes. How do I know it? The worship. How do I worship, Pastor? Go home tonight, look up this message, just lay on your face and say, God, Pastor told me to come here. See if he'll meet you there. If he don't meet you there, get up. Stand to your feet. I'm coming here as the man of the will to stand to my feet and to lift my hands up. If he don't meet you there, put your hands down. Get in the car. Yes. Go on the drop. Yes. Throw some perk Franklin on in there and then just turn it off. Yes. It's a nice day today. Let the windows down. And say, God, speak to me as you go across the bridge. If he don't speak to you, go on over to San Francisco and then come back home. I said, Lord, I'm here to worship you. If you don't meet you there, hold the Bible. What? Hold the Bible. Call up somebody that knows the Lord real good. And I haven't heard it yet. And just when you call that person, the Lord had you on my mind and on my heart. And I got a scripture for you. You got your Bible? I just told you. Open up your Bible and go to Psalms 119. Yeah. What? We just talking about that in church. Can't be a coincidence. You are the prophet. You are the answer. I thought something was wrong with me because I went to my face. I thought something was wrong with me because I went to the Bible. I thought something was wrong with me because I did raise my hand. I did have people worship and I did not even get there.
chicken after church. We serve one God. Worship ain't getting on the heaven and then hitting the, hitting the E flat and then going from there and getting the tambourine. And the, that's, not, that's not the definition of worship. Worship is personal. Worship is you and God. And then all of us coming together. What makes that piano so extraordinary is 88 keys. And you use them all to create harmony. Give me one kingdom. We don't just want that. Give me all of them that you play with. Give me the harmony now. That's what we need right there. And if you play some of the keys by itself, it was ugly. Just like your worship. But if you play it all together, it's harmony. Stop judging people. And then pull them in so we can all be a part of this heart. And let God play. 